Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and today's video is going to be all about how to get an internship in cybersecurity. Okay, so if you're someone who's currently in college or even in a boot camp, you know that one of the most important things that you probably hear about is getting an internship during school or during your education as a prerequisite to you applying for full-time jobs in the future. Internships are definitely one of the most important things that employers look for in your resume when you're applying to full-time jobs. Whether you're graduating with an associate, a bachelor's, or a boot camp, it's always going to benefit you to have internship experience on your resume. But let's say you're someone who is completely new to this world, and I'm going to be going over advice and tips for you to get your resume internship ready to help you stand out amongst other candidates that are applying for the same internship as you, as well as how and where to apply for internships. All right, so the first tip that I have for you guys who are interested in cybersecurity is specifically to start out by looking at on-campus jobs and any IT help desk roles that are available in your campus. So I usually start with this because obviously you don't have to commute for a job and typically on-campus jobs or work studies will provide flexible work schedules for you while you're a student and going to school. And personally, as someone who has been working in cybersecurity for about three years now, I do think that help desk experience is one of the most important things you can get out there because you basically just deal with all the technical difficulties and oftentimes cybersecurity or network related issues that come along on a daily basis. And it really teaches you problem solving skills and helps you deal with a very wide breadth of things and potential tools that you could be using all in this one help desk experience role. So if you're someone who is having a hard time looking for a cybersecurity internship specifically, then I would definitely apply to any junior IT specialist or junior help desk roles that'll help you get your foot in the door to then eventually being able to branch off and apply to other cybersecurity more niche roles that you may be interested in. And another thing with on-campus jobs is that typically they provide work study, which is usually a budget that the school allocates to pay your hourly wage, which means that you're guaranteed to be at least paid. I know there are unpaid internships out there, which, which I really I'm not a huge fan of and as someone who is working in any tech field IT cybersecurity software engineering data science anything you really should be compensated for your work especially when there are companies paying tens of thousands of dollars to full-time employees probably doing the same work as you as a student the next thing you can look into is specifically looking for a teaching assistant role for any IT or technology classes that you've already taken. So one of the best things I've ever done in my college career was to apply for peer tutoring roles, which means I was able to tutor for classes that were specifically in CS and IT. And then another thing was being able to apply for teaching assistant roles, which means I was leading different labs for different courses I TA'd for. I was also grading exams and basically helping students with anything that they needed as a teaching assistant. And this looked really good on my resume because when I was applying to different jobs and they had behavioral interviews asking me about my leadership experience or times when I was able to work on a team or work with people or lead certain things, a lot of that tied back to my experience as a teaching assistant where I was able to lead labs or help to figure out certain things or basically just dealt with a wider variety of experiences that I wouldn't have as a normal student. And another thing is that teaching assistants are typically paid more than the standard student worker job. So that is another thing to keep in mind if you're someone who is looking for maybe a slightly higher paying job that is still on campus and has a relatively low hours. I worked as a TA for about 20 hours every week and that was something I juggled with peer tutoring. And if you're in a boot camp, you can also be a teaching assistant after you graduate from the boot camp, which a lot of boot camps, whether it's in person or virtual, they typically have graduates of that program become the TAs or the teaching assistants to help with the next batch or the next class of students that come in to take that boot camp course. And typically these are going to be paid positions and you could be doing this TA job while you're looking for that next full time or next cybersecurity role that you're looking to get into. Honestly, it just shows that you know your stuff. And as someone who is already teaching a course leading other students, it really puts your best foot forward for future employers. All right, the next tip that I have for you guys specifically when you're trying to look for cybersecurity jobs, if you do not have experiences on your resume, the best thing that you can do that is relatively faster than, you know, finding a TA job or a on-campus job is to complete two or three cybersecurity projects to put on your resume. So there are lots and lots of security projects out there that you can do. I actually plan on making a video on 
on this. If you guys are interested in this topic, let me know in the comments below. But I believe Josh Matacor has also made a video on cybersecurity projects and I will link that down below if you guys want to check that out too. But the best thing about this is that you can really niche it down to what you're interested in. For example, if you're interested in networking security, you may try to do a project where you're using Wireshark and just viewing different packets that come into a specific network and then trying to analyze them and, and draw some kind of conclusion from it and being able to talk about that in a tangible way that may be interesting to employers. But the main point of this is to showcase your skills and your ability, your capability to be able to use specific tools that companies are already using in real world experiences or scenarios. You could do this with a bunch of different open source or cybersecurity tools that have community additions that are free to download and free to use burp suite and map metasploit covenant these are all examples of tools that you can try to use that you can try to use at your disposal and of course if you're someone who's interested in pen testing then hack the box try hack me all the capture the flags out there those are all great options to learn from and then also being able to read other people's articles on the different capture the flag challenges that they've done so then you already have a kind of guideline to follow that you're able to either repeat or learn from when you're a beginner that is just starting out in pen testing or any other cybersecurity tools that you're trying to learn all right the next thing i wanted to discuss is trying to get a certification or trying to complete some kind of other additional course that is on top of your existing bachelor's program or bootcamp program. So I actually have a video I've made on free cybersecurity courses that you can get online and I can link that below if you guys want to check that out. But let's say there are thousands of candidates applying to a junior cybersecurity role and they all have some kind of education credential like a boot camp or a degree program after a while all the resumes really start looking the same especially if you're a recruiter and you're manually looking through these but it's typically going to be some kind of application that is going to funnel through resumes but once your resume hopefully does get to a recruiter they're going to have to whittle it down to a select number of candidates that they actually want to interview and these candidates are typically going to have some experience in an internship some work study or cybersecurity project that may be relevant to the role or something that the company is just interested in moving forward with or maybe they have some kind of certification or an online course that they've completed that shows that they're slightly more involved or focused on their career compared to other candidates who may just have a degree program and when I say just having a degree or just having a boot camp that honestly sounds so bad because obviously people are going through four years of school to get a bachelor's. People are going through a year, six months of boot camp, working at it like it's a full-time job and having to pay for both of these just for employers to see, oh, well, this person has a certification, so I'm going to interview them. But honestly, that is how a lot of the hiring process ends up being, especially for more competitive jobs that may have a higher salary or maybe at a company with a better reputation or a really good cybersecurity program or maybe it's a remote company and people just want to work at remote jobs you know a lot of things can go into it but especially in your early career employers typically have the leverage but once you continue down your career you're going to start having the leverage and saying that hey you have the skills that the employers want even as someone with one two three years of experience, you have a lot more leverage than someone who is just coming in. So just bear with me for your early career. You're definitely going to have to show a little bit that you're up a notch compared to other candidates. And the best way to do that is with having extra courses or having a certification under your belt. A good certification that many cybersecurity professionals start out with, especially if you're going through school, is the CompTIA A+, which is a really popular certification just because a lot of the things that you learn probably during boot camp or during a degree program is going to be on the A+. And then of course other popular CompTIA certifications are the Network Plus and the Security Plus. The Security Plus I actually took and made a video on how I studied and passed it and I can link that below if you guys want to check that out. I do think that Security Plus is a lot more in depth and it definitely takes extra studying if you're someone who maybe is only taking one or two courses right now or has the capacity to study for an extra certification. I would go down that route if that's something you're interested in. But of course the free courses I listed in the video link below is probably going to be the easiest way because first of all they're free and second of all a lot of them are really fast and you can probably complete them at your own pace within a few days or a few weeks for a lot of them. 
And the next part of this video is going into the actual job search of how to find internships and where to even go about looking for them. Okay, so of course you can apply online, but you guys probably already know that. But I think that one thing that a lot of college grads and just college students in general really overlook is local career fairs as well as any local conferences or even school career fairs that your school may host. These are really going to be one of the best places to go because first of all, they're typically going to be companies that are local to your area that are looking for specific talent. And a lot of times these companies may already have partnerships with your school. So there's already that connection that they know, hey, you're from the school or you're from this boot camp and they may already be familiar with your coursework so that you may already have a foot in the door, which was the case for a lot of the local career fairs that I went to when I was just a sophomore, a junior in college. And they had a bunch of different career fairs where it was really nice that employers already knew of the school that you went to. And another awesome thing is that there typically tend to be more alumni. So if someone who is recruiting or someone who is standing at a booth at a career fair, they have a much higher chance of being an alumni from your school compared to a tech conference that you might fly to California for or fly to New York for. And that extra line chain of connection is really nice because then you can talk about the coursework and you just have more in common to talk about. And that honestly just gets your foot in the door because you're able to talk with that person on a closer level. And the second way that a lot of my friends have gotten jobs out of college is specifically by asking your professors or going to your school's career center. So career centers are a really nice place that I honestly hadn't taken advantage of until I was a junior in college. I've heard of it. They do like resume reviews, they do interview prep workshops, they'll even do mock interviews sometimes if you have a really good uh, school that cares about, I don't know, students graduating and finding jobs. One of my professors actually was one of the career guidance counselors for technology at my university and I still keep in touch with her to this day because she's just so good at what she does. And she is actually the professor that got a lot of my close friends their jobs, especially when they barely had anything on your resume. She was the one who marked them up help them figure it out, help them apply to certain jobs. And a lot of professors, believe it or not, have a lot of connections in the industry. And if you're close to a professor and you're able to talk to them about things like finding a job or looking for an internship, you would be really surprised to see how many of them already have many friends and just connections in the workforce that were in data science, cybersecurity, IT, software engineering, from large companies to small companies to government agencies. Teachers are pretty well connected, that's all I can say. And if you're someone who is close to a professor, it does not hurt to just tell them, hey, yeah, I'm looking for an internship this summer, or I'm looking for a part-time job in cybersecurity or IT, blah, 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 here are my skills. And maybe you could also share with them a copy of your resume. They may give you feedback. They may help hook you up with a connection with someone that they know in the field. Honestly, teachers are just a really good resource in general to talk about all things career related because they've seen many, many students students go through this and it's just nice to talk to someone who is outside of your friend circle or your family and get actual unbiased advice from and that is what professors and career centers in your school are there for. Alright so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys found it helpful and if you have any questions in the comments below. Feel free to drop any other advice that you might have on finding an internship during college in cyber security or any other tech field that you're in or maybe interested in going into. And by the way, a lot of this conversation has been brought up in the Discord channel. We have a Discord and it is linked below if you guys want to join and check it out. But there we talk about all things, job opportunities, certifications, education, boot camps, everything under the sun around, around cybersecurity careers and just breaking into cybersecurity in general. So excited to see you guys there if you guys want to join the Discord channel. I'm also having 20% off all my cybersecurity career resources from June 1st to 15th, linked in the description below. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below if there are any other video topics that you might want to see in the future. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.